Welcome back to the Getting Started with Clues series. This video is the second of two videos on creating and editing source documents in Clues. In the first part, we saw how to create and enter source records. In this video, I will demonstrate how a document record is created. In Clues, we have forms or templates for each of the document types. These are accessed using the Explorer bar. Censuses are grouped by country. The census substitute document type is for city directories and similar records which help locate families in between censuses. The general documents group contains many common document types. Let's look at the generic document which you can use when you have a document that doesn't match any of the other templates. All document templates have a similar layout. There is an area for information about the document, such as dates or geographic descriptors and source. Another area for attaching files and URLs, as well as a general description of the document. There's an area for linking people to the document and a set of common controls. Let's look at an example and work our way through the document entry process. Suppose we are interested in a gold family for which we already know the children. A 1930 census record has been found for this family. We see it's from New York State, Kings County, Brooklyn, and the sheet number is 17A with a stamped page number of 206. And also note that it's their address is on 35th Street. Next I'm going to resize these windows a little bit so I can see the census form while I'm entering the information into the document and call up the census document form itself. The personal file ID is a text field you can use when you want to link the record with a physical file or any other entity that makes sense to you. In this case I'm just going to leave it blank because I don't even I do not have a physical file set up for this. Supervisory district was 30 and I will tab over to the enumeration district, which was 1639, New York, Kings County, Brooklyn. And I will click on the down arrow to select the source. It did come from the 1930 U.S. Census Population Schedule. Recall that we could edit this source here if we wanted to, showing it's from Ancestry. That's the provider we were just using. In the next section, the files and URL, you can add a file. I'm going to click on the Add File button, and we can just click on the file name, and it will stick it in there. And if I want to add a description, I'd click in that box and just start typing. There's also the capability to just click on a file in the window Explore, Windows Explorer and, and drag it and drop it into the same area. I'm going to remove that copy. I'm also going to uh, select this file as being primary, which means the image will show up here on this form. Now we can move on to entering the people. Since the first person 
is Morris. I do not have him in the database, so I'm going to click on New, and I will enter his information. Okay, the page was 17A. The enumeration date was 15 April. Looking down at the form, it's line 20. Oops, 35th Street. Showing a house number of 1419, dwelling 113, family 314. Just stepping through these and entering the information that's shown on the census below. Okay, now that I've completed this form, I'm going to save it. And we can see the information shows up here. The next person is his wife, Tilly. She is also new to the database. After, since I've entered one person, already it's going to ask if I want to fill in the detail form with the previous data to save me some typing and I'm going to select yes. So I just need to update the line number. Type in her name. Now that I've entered her data I click OK. And she is also there now. The next one, two, three, four names are all the children. We already have those. So I'm going to click on link. That's going to bring up the list. And I will scroll down. And we're looking for Sydney. Actually, Sydney. Rose, Re Rebecca, and Harold. All four of them I want to bring in, so I'm going to do that. Now we'll go through and enter in the details for each person by double clicking. It's going to ask me the same question. This was Sydney. So now I've completed the entry of all of the information for each of the persons in this family. As you can see by the fact that the details boxes are all showing check marks now. To see a report of this census, click on the print report button and a preview would come up. Just click on the little printer icon in the upper left hand corner to print the report. I'm just going to close it for now. So now we'll save the popular save this uh, census report and I'm going to go back to the people list and we see we've added some names to the family. If I go back to the U.S. Censuses for a second, we can see the new census report we just entered here. And double click on it, and there it is. Well, that about covers the process of entering a document into Clues. Be sure to view the other videos that explore the various features of Clues. Thanks for watching.